the next part of the book is about stagnation. And I think that this is a part that, you know, we hear a lot about stress. We hear a lot about burnout. But what you mentioned earlier is this middle zone of mediocrity where you're just kind of showing up and checking the boxes. I think that's a slump that a lot of people fall into and don't totally recognize. So how do you see the warning signs of that stagnation? Many times stagnation comes from playing the most dangerous game that any of us can play, and that is the comparison game. And uh, it's a game that I played for four decades of my life and decided to take myself out of that game a couple of years ago because uh, I wasn't finding it beneficial. And, hmm. you know, stagnation uh, can be a result of that. Now, when you play the comparison game, ultimately there's there's two things that can happen. One, you can compare yourself to everyone else and feel lousy, you feel unworthy, you feel like everybody's got a better job, everybody's got a better spouse, everybody's got more money, everybody's got, you know, and it makes you feel less than because you, you're comparing yourself to others. Uh, and that's one, one issue. Uh, the other issue, and this can often cause stagnation, is the opposite of that. You, you compare yourself to the guy in the cubicle next to you and go, I'm doing pretty good. Like my life's pretty good, so I don't really need to grow or evolve or, or push any further. I can just put on the mental cruise control because life is pretty good right now. And, yeah. you know, uh, to me, and I'm very, very careful in how I, I choose my words. And uh, for me, there's a difference between being content and being complacent. Uh, I'm very content in my life. I'm incredibly happy with the life that I have. Uh, I've got three wonderful children. I've got a great relationship with my ex-wife. I'm healthy. I'm fit. I get to do work that fills me up and I find meaning in. Like I am content with my life, but I am by no means complacent. You know, I'm not done yet. And each of those areas is as content as I may feel. I'm not complacent in becoming a better father or becoming a better speaker. Um, so there's a difference there. And I, I think it's the complacency that, that, you know, can cause the problems. It's the complacency that causes the stagnation. And the reason it's tricky is usually when somebody hits rock bottom, whether that's in a relationship, that's financially, uh, maybe that's with, with drugs or, or alcohol, they hit this low point. They all of a sudden feel inspired to start making some change because they have hit that rock bottom. Uh, the dangerous part about stagnation is you don't hit a low point. Yeah. It's just this numb feeling. So nothing ever jostles you into making a change unless, and this is one of the keys to it, unless you insulate yourself with people that care enough about you to tell you and just say, Hey, Chris, man, I, I believe in you. I think you're better than what you're showing me right now. I think you've been stagnating, man. And, and I'm telling you this as a friend because I care about you, but I just feel like you've been treading water for these last couple of years. And because I care about you, I just want to bring that to your attention because maybe it was a blind spot. And there have been a few times in my life where I've definitely stagnated. And I'm very grateful that I've had people that cared enough to tell me because it was a blind spot. I don't think anyone that's got the mental cruise control on realizes that they flipped that switch. Yeah. They don't know it. And that's why, you know, we, we have to bring it to awareness because you'll never improve something you're unaware of and you will never fix something you're oblivious to. So until you can acknowledge that you are stagnating and aware that you're stagnating, you'll continue to have that mental cruise control on. So let's say you hit a wall and you've got your relationship or your business or your friends that are, you know, intervening and telling you that you seem to be stuck. What's, what's the first step you take to kind of get out of that place? Well, I believe to shake things up, you have to change your inputs. I'm a huge believer that your inputs uh, what you read, watch, and listen to, uh, uh, who your friends are, the people you spend most time with, all of the things that are coming into your life dictate your outputs. You know, the, the inputs dictate your mindset, your attitude, your belief system, your, you know. So uh, in order to change the outputs, because that's what's been stagnating, we got to change the inputs, uh, which can mean, you know, uh, maybe there's some people in your life that that aren't adding value and, and helping you improve you know maybe they have more of an apathetic approach and, and you're kind of lugging them around like dead weight and i'm not saying anyone needs to cut anyone out of their life but you can make the conscious choice to spend less time with those people if they're kind of dragging you down uh, then also shake up what you're reading watching and listening to you know uh, pick up a new book or listen to a new podcast or you know do something that's going to kind of shake things up uh, and this is where too uh, you have an opportunity to expand outside of maybe your direct genre or industry uh, you have an opportunity to to read watch and listen to stuff that has a different perspective than you have 
One of the mistakes most people make is we insulate ourselves in this filter bubble where all we do is associate with and read, watch, and listen to things that we already believe. Mm. And it just, it just, we, we increase our bias towards these things. Uh, I find a tremendous amount of value in diversity, especially diversity of thought. Yeah. So I intentionally listen to and read books um, that have a different life perspective than I have. And the beautiful part is um, either one of two things happens. One, it gets me to increase clarity on what I actually believe and will help me strengthen my convictions, which is a good thing, or it gives me new information that I wasn't privy to and actually gets me to see the world differently, to change my mind, to look at things in a different way. <clears throat> and that's also valuable, but you only get that if you step outside of what you're currently believing. So just remember, if you will always keep getting, you know, whatever you've been getting, unless you change whatever it is that, that you're subjecting yourself to.